Hey everyone, it's Kanga here, and so I'm going to be giving you a tier list on all 15 legends within Season 7 of Apex Legends. I'm going to speak for a bit before hopping straight into the list, but I'll have some timestamps up on the screen now, as well as chapters within the video, if you want to skip towards a specific character. This tier list is pretty general in terms of not being catered specifically towards ranked, casual, playing with a full trio, or just playing with randoms, just purely how the legends currently pair up against each other. I'll also be mainly taking into account how the legends play on the new open map of Olympus. I've made a video similar to this one before, and I really enjoyed seeing all of the comments and what people had to say on the topic, so while I encourage you to add anything you think I missed or got wrong, just be sure not to get too toxic about it. I've amassed nearly 200 hours of playtime in Apex, which compared to some of you won't be an absurd amount, but I think it's enough to form a pretty strong opinion on the game and its characters. Also, I'm fully aware that all legends can be the best in the right hands, but obviously some legends are going to be easier to pop off with than others. Lastly, before I hop into this, please keep in mind that I'm making this video only a day or two after the release of Season 7, so if in a few weeks you're watching this after some massive nerf, don't complain about me placing a legend too high. Surprisingly enough, I can't actually see into the future and I don't know what plans Respawn have in store for the game. With that all out of the way though, let's get into my tier list for Season 7 of Apex Legends. Going alphabetically, we're going to start off with Bangalore. She's one of the legends that I've had the least experience with playing, excluding some of the more recent releases. And she's always a pretty solid pick, especially with how well she works in the open areas of Olympus. Her smokes can be utilised more effectively to cover larger areas and create trek points, and the same can be said for her ultimate. However, compared to the other two maps, it's generally going to be a little easier to get away from her rolling thunder. If you weren't aware, her ultimate did get a reduce of 2 seconds on the fuse from 8 seconds to 6 seconds a season, however its primary function is still going to remain as zoning. Her passive is also really good on the new map, as obviously the increased speed enables her to reach cover faster, which in most areas of the map can be pretty hard to come across. With all that in mind, I'd place her near the bottom of the A tier for now. Bloodhound is next up and one of my favourite legends to play right now, and despite him having his ups and downs throughout his life in the games, I think right now he's balanced and a viable pick. I believe it is easier to play than Crypto, who would generally play a somewhat similar role, but I'll talk more about him later. Bloodhound's tactical is great for pinpointing where enemies are and can help you decide when the right time to peek is. His ultimate is really fun to use and will nearly always give you the advantage in a fight. His passive is pretty useful too, however often you'll see or hear an enemy before seeing signs of them with the passive. Having said all that, I reckon Bloodhound is somewhere in the A tier. The next legend I'll talk about is Caustic, who was in a decent place before the new season, but I don't think the new map is great for him. While obviously there are still areas on the map where you can bucket down and you can place his canisters onto the new vehicle and random into people, he seems to have become more of a situational pick than he already was. This patch, his gas lost one of its best features, being that it no longer blurs the vision of enemies. While the damage was slightly buffed in order to balance out this change, I think that it overall equates to a nerf for him. For simply how poor he is on most situations in Olympus, I'm going to put him in the B tier, which might be a little controversial, but I think I'd place him higher if I was taking into account other maps a little more. Crypto is the fourth legend that I'm going to cover on this tier list. I think overall he ranks pretty low considering what I mentioned earlier about this being a general tier list. If you play Crypto and have good comms with your teammates, he instantly becomes an incredibly strong pick, whereas on the other hand, with the lack of comms in random games, he's pretty much the weakest legend in the match. While his drone offers a diverse way to gain intel, if it gets shot out, not only can it not be used again, it also puts his ultimate out of commission for the same period of time. The way he disables enemies is really useful though, and again with the right timing and comms he can be one of the better legends. One thing a lot of people forget when it comes to Crypto is how he, or more accurately, his drone, reacts with respawn banners and beacons. Using his drone he can interact with both of them from far away, which is something that no other legend can say. With that in mind, I think he's towards the top end of the B tier. Gibraltar has always been one of the stronger legends within Apex, and that remains true in Season 7. No character can offer the same protection with his shield dome, and his combination of reduced damage being a defensive legend as well as the gun shield is a force to be reckoned with, and even if you have slightly worse aim than your opponent, you can probably hit them for more than they can hit you. Going back to his shield dome, its ability to give you faster heals is often a game changer, I can easily allow you to get back to full health before the enemy can even reach you. His shield dome is also particularly useful on Olympus, as obviously it can counter third parties, which are a big issue on this map, since it's easy to get around. There isn't much else to say about Gibby, and I'm going to be placing him in the S tier. Horizon is the talk of the town right now. Obviously it's just the latest legend to join the games, and her abilities add some new mechanics into the game which completely change the way engagements work. Her passive is often the last thing people talk about with her, however it's a lot more useful than people seem to realise. The extra second or two you save after taking a fall can be enough to help you pop a shield cell, and the extra movement will allow you to be more unpredictable in the air. Her tactical, gravity lift, is obviously incredibly strong, especially considering it has a cooldown of only 15 seconds, 
five of which the ability is still active, so it may as well only be a 10 second cooldown. You can use it for yourself and your teammates, either just to move around the map, easier or to take high ground in the middle of an intense team fight. Or, you can throw it behind the enemy's cover and propel them into the air when they least expect it, making them an easy target. You do need to be careful doing this though, as the last thing you want to do is give the ulting blood hand with the Mastiff a pass straight into the heart of your team. The black hole ultimate is excellent too. You can drag people out from behind cover using it, and when they try and run out of it, the enemies will have an extremely predictable, slower than usual movement making them a lot easier to kill. She'll be stronger right now than ever more likely than not, since people don't fully understand how she works and how to play against her. So for right now, after she's released, I'll put her toward the top of the A tier, but that will probably change as people understand how to counter her abilities and playstyle. Lifeline has always had a solid foothold towards the top end of the meta, and that is still true in Season 7. Her passive is undoubtedly the best in the game, being able to give yourself cover while reviving is crazy. Obviously it can be cancelled easily, but it's still invaluable time that you buy yourself, and unless your teammate is in a really bad position, it's normally easy enough to hold off the enemies until the revive is completed. A healing drone isn't crazily good compared to her other abilities, but nonetheless it's useful to be able to heal up in tight situations, such as if you've just gotten out of the ring, and also doesn't hurt to get a few extra health points while hiding behind cover in the middle of a fight. Her ultimate is great too obviously, and it's just strengthened if you feed her ultimate accelerants. As far as I'm concerned, lifeline is in the S tier, and won't be going anywhere without a major nerf or rework. Loba has been pretty weak and towards the lower end of the meta since she was released. However, I personally think the buff of ammo not taking up one of the two item limit for ultimate this season is a really good step in the right direction. Her passive is okay for saving time, and while obviously can be helpful here and there, it's really situational, as there has to actually be an item of that tier there, unlike most passives which are used every other fight. The teleport is great and can catch enemies off guard, but the range could use a buff in my opinion. And overall, her current kit isn't enough to get her any higher than the C tier in my books. Mirage is unfortunately going to take a similar position as Loba. His abilities are lackluster and will rarely fool a decent opponent, and even if they are briefly bamboozled, it probably won't be long enough to have a massive impact. His ultimate does make for a good get out of jail free card and enables you to reposition pretty well, but it tells the enemy that you're probably in a pretty sticky situation when you use it, so their top priority is probably going to be hunting you down, meaning that you might not end up making it too far away. His passive is cool and can come in clutch, but the fact that it happens after he dies will more often than not mean that it's too late. I'm going to put Mirage in the D tier, which I'll probably cop some backlash for once again, but doing so will make our next clutch and not feel too lonely. Octane, while incredibly fun to play, offers practically no help to his team. Obviously, his ultimate can be used by them, but half of the legend in the game has their own movement based abilities on a shorter cooldown. His passive heal was doubled in the Season 7 update, which also in turn makes his tactical better as he can recover from the damage twice as fast. His speed boost is obviously great in team fights, making it harder for the enemy to hit you, but it just isn't enough more often than not. His ultimate is pretty much just a worse version of Pathfinders, and the same can be said for both characters' tactical abilities. But yeah, Octane is obviously pretty bad and is going to be going in the D tier as well. Pathfinder has been changed a lot recently, and he had a number of changes in the Season 7 patch, which I'll put on screen now. His passive of using the survey beacons and getting information on the next ring is pretty much the most important information you can get, and makes rotating decisions so much easier. His ultimate ability can give you and your teammates easy high ground over anyone else, and it's one of the easiest and fastest ways to escape from the zone that's always chasing you. His grappling hook is an incredible tool of mobility, and if you use it well, there's nothing the enemy can do. Additionally, with that, there are also some amazing interactions he has with the new tridents, although I have a feeling that could be nerfed at some point soon. The grapple is also just good for movement in general. Again, like his ultimate, it's great for quickly traversing across the map and escaping the ring. Where he is now, I think Pathfinder is towards the top end of the A tier. Rampart is a similar case to Caustic and how she works on the new map, as it's harder to find good positions to set up her cover and ultimate in, considering how open the map is. One really cool and strong new thing that's been added to her this season though is that you can actually attach her ultimate to the back of the trident, and obviously that makes it really strong as you can move while shooting it, but it's also considerably harder to aim with it while doing that. Rampart is the only legend which I don't have unlocked, and so I have no experience with actually playing it myself, but based on what I've seen, I feel pretty comfortable placing her in the C tier. Revenant is in a pretty strong position right now. His kit went unchanged in Season 7 patch, and his silence is still incredibly strong, particularly on targets who rely on their abilities a lot to get away, like Wraith and Pathfinder. His passive is pretty good for when you're trying to sneak around behind the enemy and get in a good position to pinch them, as well as obviously if you want to climb a little higher than your average legend can. His ultimate when used right can easily overwhelm the enemy, but it's really important that you place that thing well. So with that, I think Revenant is placed well in the B tier, but an argument can probably be made to put him up into the A tier. Watson's ability to lock down areas of the map is weakened by the introduction of Olympus, in a similar scenario to Core 6 and Ramparts. Obviously there are still numerous small enclosed spaces that you can set up in, however since the map as a whole is more open, it's harder to bunker down and only watch one or two angles, since you'll have teams coming at you from all over the place. Watson is pretty much completely useless in the open, as her electric fences can just be walked straight around. Her ultimate can be used in the open in a few situations, particularly against the ultimates of Gibraltar and Bangalore. With the ultimate, 
launch is able to prevent enemies from throwing in grenades and similar items, although this can be shut down with Crypto CMP. Ultimate Excellence fully charge your ultimate, so even your team can quickly choose an air to claim as your own. With all of that in mind, on Olympus, I think that Watson closes up the B tier. Wraith isn't quite as strong as she used to be, however she's still one of the better legends in the game, especially on Olympus, as she's pretty much essential for good rotations, considering how much open space there is in the new map. Her passive is incredibly useful as you can know when enemies are nearby you before they even shoot, and by relaying this information onto your teammates, you can quickly turn the advantage of the fight before it even begins. Her tactical ability allows her to further retreat for a few seconds without taking damage, however it's pretty easy to follow, so you want to be careful when you're using it. Her portal is good for getting quickly in and out of fights for both you and your teammates, plus you can also camp to get some pretty easy kills, although that's a pretty cheesy strategy. With that in mind, I'm going to be putting Wraith as an SD hero, although she's worse than Lifeline and Gibraltar in my mind. That's going to wrap up my tier list for Season 7 of Apex Legends. Again, if you have any like constructive criticism on this, things I missed out or should have added or should have done differently, just anything like that, comment down below. Again, so many talks about it though, last time people got really angry about a bunch of stuff and it was pretty hectic, but... We'll try and keep things a bit more chill this time, but yeah, let me know if you want to see any more Apex content, whether that be other tier lists, like, I don't know, gun tier lists or POI tier lists, something like that. Or maybe challenge guides, I'm not too sure how complicated the challenges are in Apex, but maybe I can do something like that. But yeah, that's it for now. If you'd find this video useful, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, share, all those things help out massively. But yeah, that's it for now, and I'll see you all next time. See ya.